Hey, how's it going today? All right, I'm back with another video, and this one's going to be containing to a uh, microphone, or a couple of microphones for a fact, for a matter, matter of fact. Anyways, there's two types of microphones if you're doing any type of streaming, um, any type of podcasting. There is usually a USB microphone or there's an XLR. Now if you're podcasting, running streams, eventually most people end up going over to the XLR style, but I would say that 99% of people that start streaming and podcasting at the beginning, they usually start out with a USB mic. And for USB mics, one of the best mics that you're probably ever gonna find is gonna be the Elgato Wave 1 or Wave 3. Oh, I want to add in before we go any further. This is an unpaid, unsponsored. I'm basically doing this video because I just want to get the information out. And it's more regarding pop filters than anything else. But I wanted to put this little section in just to give people a heads up. Now, the Elgato microphone goes for about $150. It's a, it's a condenser mic. It's digital which basically means using a USB gets plugged into the computer and what really works the magic with this microphone is the Wavelink software. Now the Wavelink software kind of resembles what you might see over my shoulder right here. This is a Go XLR Mini. They make it in a couple different sizes. And basically what that does is it allows you to open up the program. So we're not going to talk about this right now. We're going to talk about the Wave. The Wavelink program allows you to open up. You get a similar looking screen or program on your screen that resembles the sliders and whatnot. And it gives you a ton of adjustments where you can go in and you can use filters, you, um, all kinds of... Um, it's just unbelievable. Long story short, a lot of people can go out and they can spend $30, $40 and you can get a decent microphone, a USB microphone. I did. And it got me by for a while. I was pretty happy with it. But as you start to evolve in the streaming world, the podcast world, you start to pick up things with sound and you just get you get more fussy because there's so much truth in the story or the saying that your podcast, your stream, your video is probably more dependent on the quality of the sound you're putting out than the quality of the video. Meaning whether you're shooting in 4K, 1080p, 30, it doesn't matter. But and this is, this is absolutely true. So anyways, I ended up finally evolving over to the Wave 3. It comes with a few buttons, three, bu three presses on the button, a control. One of them you can use to adjust your mic. It lights up. The second one, you press it, it lights up for your headphones. The third one lights up, that's a, that's a mute button. On the back of it, it has a headphone out port and it has your USB plug. There's really nothing else. When you get this microphone for $150, I kind of think they could add a little bit more in, but for the quality and the programming, it's kind of a kind of a tough call. Basically, you get the microphone and you get this little arm that attaches on there, kind of rubber or plastic, and it goes on either your desk stand or what you would be using. I use, I love Elgato products. I, I use the low profile arm. The way my desk is set up, it, it, it's just the perfect fit. Some people like to use the higher arm that cuts over the monitor and stays out of sight, out of mind. I kind of don't mind my microphone showing. So I kind of evolved over to an XLR and that's where I ran into a problem with pop filters. Once I got this mic, 
I ended up, I liked it. It has a built-in pop filter, but I still felt it needed a little more adjustments. Now, you can adjust the thresholds and the gain and everything in your Wave 3 program, but you still have to look out for plosives, which are P's, S's, things that will, will cause a distraction to the quality of your audio. So I ended up picking up, and I, I forgot what I paid for it. I don't know if it was $20, $30, whatever, but it was worth every cent. And it's just, Elgato, I gotta give them credit. They're just genius with how easy they make everything. Basically, that's it. Pops right on. So if you're gonna go with, if you have the money and you can afford $150, or even a little bit less, you could probably go and get the same quality sound with the same program that runs on your computer. You could go with the Wave 1. You don't get as many adjustments, but you're still getting the same, you're still getting the same setup as far as components and quality of sound. You just can't do quite as much with it physically. So the rest of this video is gonna be dedicated more towards XLR and the issue I ran into with getting a pop filter. So on that note, we'll be right back, and I'm going to give a little bit of schooling. This may not interest a lot of you because you're used to watching me do hardware, but this is hardware, obviously, but this one's going to be focused more on an audio type thing, something I ran into, I had to come up with on my own, and it worked out really well for me. So we'll be back in a few as soon as I get this mess kind of cleared up. Okay, folks, I made a little adjustment with the camera. I wanted to get a better look so you could see about what I'm exactly talking about. Now, for $99, I ended up doing a little bit of research. $99 I spent, not $99 to do research. But I ended up finding the Rode Pod mic, which is an XLR mic. And obviously, you can see the difference. The XLR mic has the three larger pins in the in the bottom of it some of them go on the side it depends on what type of mic you're going with now I know it's less expensive it's a less expensive than than the wave mic that I was talking about but this microphone kind of works on a whole different method this is more instead of a computer mic this is more of a studio mic this mic you can't plug into your computer you have to get basically a go XLR are a podcast or something that on the opposite end of the plug you have I'm sure anybody that's been around computers knows the cables you have a fee female and a male end cable that powers these that goes into basically you're either going to need a Elgato what is it uh, well there's, there's a few different things there's a cloud lifter there's the Go XLR Mini and the full size Go XLR, which is like four hundred dollars or a little bit more. And Aver Media makes another type. And, well, th there's a number of companies that make them. With this mic, you don't need a, a cloud lifter. Some of them you need additional power to go to the microphone because it pretty much it, it isn't USB, which is digital, which is powered by the computer. This one you have to power using your mixer and or your, your, your cloud lifter, however you choose to go. Some people use a cloud lifter with this. They say they hear a, bit, a little better sound. I've tested my sound using a couple programs and it's absolutely fantastic. I, I, I really do love it. So, it comes with a built-in pop filter. But I tend to have a deeper voice. I have a deeper voice. Actually, it's not the deepest voice, but I, I definitely don't have a squeaky voice. So, I started looking around on the internet and I looked everywhere for a pop filter for this. And the only thing I could find was one of, them, one of those generic ones with the flexible cable that comes around and it has that big nylon 
circle that goes in front of it. And I, I'm sorry, but I just don't like those things. I don't like the look of them because again, I don't mind showing my microphone in my videos. Back in the day, everybody showed their microphones. Nobody cared. Didn't bother me a bit whether I watched a video and I could see the mic. I actually enjoyed it because I got to look at it, kind of study it a little bit. Now everybody wants them hidden, out of sight, out of mind, up above their heads, down below, where, wherever. I, I, I guess it's uh, about having a clean looking video. On the other hand, I think that having a microphone in the video doesn't affect the video whatsoever as long as the sound quality is good. I think it brings a little bit of that podcast look to the, to the picture, but we're getting off track a little bit. So I looked everywhere and they don't make a pop filter for this. There, there isn't one anywhere. So I ended up going on an internet and I found this pop filter that is pretty much homemade. And now there's two kinds of pop filters. You have a foam that can go over your microphone and then there's metal pop filters. The metal pop filters, you gotta understand how they work. Foam absorb, absorbs the plosives and softens it up. Metal is used to put sound through and I don't know how it would work with this because it's such a tight mess, but on the bigger ones, you can see that it's either octagon, diamond shaped. And what that does is it directs the air, which carries the sound, in different directions, away from the microphone, so you hear that sound eliminating your plosives. Now, again, this microphone, $99, is a studio mic, it's XLR, it's analog, which means you need an external source to run the microphone to adjust the sounds to get the thresholds the gain you you you, you want to have uh, what do they call that a uh, sound gate where you set the there's all different filters where you can set it up so at a certain level you can't hear any sound in the background like your fans and whatnot there's a lot of things you can do with it but right now it's all about mics it's about plosives so i had another one somewhere and i get how the guy made it was basically a ring with four legs it was homemade with four legs on it and it kind of clipped on around the microphone and it had this i get it I think with a little bit of time, the guy really could have had a great idea. But the type of foam that he used in it was so porous, I don't even think that it would do anything. And it was held together by elastics. And I paid like $20 for that, I think. Maybe a little bit less. But he was on to something because he could have really, with a little bit of time, and I'm gonna take that piece that he had and I'm gonna completely redesign it in the future. But I was sitting home. Oh, and by the way, we're having a blizzard out right now, so that's why I'm just sitting here blabbing away doing something. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to be doing a video. I'm tearing my video card down, my 3080 Ti. I'm gonna check the thermal pads and I'm also gonna replace the thermal paste on it. I'm hoping the pads are good and I don't have to replace them, but I do have replacement pads for it if I need them. I prefer to use the ones that come with it. So I'm gonna cross my fingers on that. So, sitting around the house, racking my brain, saying how can I make a little pop filter? Because it did, give a, it did give me a good sound, but it didn't give me the sound I wanted on my plosives. Now plosives, the difference between plosives is, say, if you're gonna talk directly into a microphone, you're gonna get pop, but, if you take it cover it up and then use your peas pop pop filter pop Sam Sally you will hear the difference you might need headphones to hear the difference but you will hear the difference in the 
P's, P, Paul, Paul. So, yes, I kind of did make this one. So long story short, I ended up going out. Actually, I had bought these to, to put a hole in my desk so I could run cables through them. I'm sure everybody knows these wire um, cable, whatever they call them, cable management hole things. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, I wonder if I could ever do anything with this. Like, if it would fit. So I ended up grabbing the mic and I put it on and I'm like, holy mackerel, it fit like a glove. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Now you can get these in like a bronze look and it has to be this specific one. I've tried some other ones. I think it's like a two, they, they, they only make a couple, they make like a one and a half and a two point something. So if you're into mics and you need a pop filter and you have this type of microphone, I'll show you how to do this. It's made of plastic. Basically what I ended up doing was sanding it down a little bit, very light. All you need is like a, a, a plastic Brillo type pad, like on the back of a washing sponge, something soft that isn't gonna really cut into it, but still gonna knock the shine off of it. And I ended up just giving it a little black paint. And this was my first attempt at it. And this is what I ended up coming up with and it fit right on with, with ease. And it's, it really worked great for the plosives. Now I know it kind of looks a little bit like a hat or a flying saucer, flying saucer type thing, but it works great. It really isn't ugly, I don't think. Maybe I can patent it and get rich, I don't know, I doubt it. So you end up with the original ring. You end up putting a little paint on it. And you get yourself a homemade pop filter. Have a little swig off my coffee. Tried to keep the slurping down. Okay. So there's a few things that you're gonna need and you probably might have it hanging right around the house. The best thing as far as material goes, if you have any spandex, any nylon type, you want something made of nylon that's flexible because would cotton work? Sure, cotton would work, but what happens when it stretches? Basically it stretches. So, you want something that's going to stay flexible and you want to be able to pull it over. So once you get this, you scuff it up, you end up with this once you paint it. A little bit of Rust-Oleum, wham bam, thank you ma'am. Oh, I haven't heard that in a while. You want a decent piece, it keeps picking up all kinds of dust, it sticks to the skin on my fingers because my hands are dry. Uh, this whole hand washing 50 times a day thing is just destroying my, my hands. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there running the same issue. You want something like this that's nice and flexible, something nylon. You can use an old nylon type shirt, like a, a gym type shirt or something. You can even buy for a couple dollars on Amazon. You can pick these up and you can also pick up a sheet of spandex type material. And if you want for additional, additional sound dampering, you, you can get yourself some very thin, I would say no thicker than quarter inch foam. This one I just cut off the top of a, I cut off the top of a, an old pop filter I had sitting in the drawer. You could stick this right in there. I like to use the super glue. This super glue that I use on here is the gel super glue. 
I like the gel because it's just a little easier to work with. It's a little more manageable than the, than the thin stuff. We squirt it out, it just goes all over the place. So you have to be careful with this. Great stuff. Anyways, what I would do if I was going to go that route and I wanted the little bump in it, I would put a few dabs around the corners, let it set, let it dry, and voila. You could pop that on and have a pop filter. Kind of myself, don't like the idea of it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make one the way I made my first one, but I have found lots of ways to get it to look a lot neater. And it's pretty simple. So once you get it all pulled down nice and tight and you've got a nice clean ring, all you gotta do is crimp it over with a little bit of glue, use a small tool or something and hold it down, spot it in four places, get it to stick, trim it up good around here. You can also put something around there after for a little bit of reinforcement if you want. It's pretty much up to you. But basically my first shot at it came out with this. Now, you can see I got a little sloppy with the glue and didn't keep it as clean as this one's gonna look. Still came out good and works great. And depending on what type of video I'm doing, if I want a little bit more softening to my plosives, I don't use just the nylon. I also just pull it off. Pop in a little bit of foam. Set it right down inside of the microphone. It just barely touches the top of the microphone, but it gives a great sound. So on that note, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we get this all trimmed up and what we what, how we do this. Matter of fact, we just keep rolling and I'll just snip out the parts that we need. Okay, first thing. Ring. Paint it if you want it. Do you have to? No. Third thing. Get it scented. Once you do your folds, let everything drop. What you want to do is get this pulled. Look around at it because you don't want any of these crimples. So you kind of loosen it a little, pull it, and there you go. So. You don't want to pull it too tight. Maybe give it a little bit of twist, keep it scented. Find yourself a smaller elastic, something that will fit over it. If you can, if you don't have fat fingers like me, oh boy, is it snowing hot out. You get an elastic over this. And this is just temporary right now, the elastic. This is just a hold the material in place where you want it. You don't want to push it all the way down to the to the edging because that's where you're going to put your glue and use your tool to hold it in place. What do you think so far? Doesn't that look sweet? Look nice? Now remember it's easy to clean after a little bit of tape or a little bit a little cleaner and bingo, you got it. Okay, so we're back. So we have our scissors. I usually keep a razor knife around just in case. Never really know when you might need it. You've got your Gorilla Glue. It's cheap enough. I would buy probably like a 20 gram bottle of it because you can go through this stuff so fast. 
keep it shake, shaken very well. You need your surgical tools. You don't need these really. I have them, so I'm going to use them. I would think that I'm going to probably use something like this. You may have to clean up your tools afterwards if you get a little bit of glue on it, but it's worth it. Okay, so we have what we have. So what you're going to do first is get your glue to the top, but don't squeeze it while you're open it. opening it. This stuff dries so fast. So what I'm going to do actually is pull this elastic down just a little bit more. There we go. This way I can put a little amount of this glue on here. Let it soak through. Spread it a little bit. You can see right away it starts to grab. I hope that doesn't eat through the elastic. And there you have it. So you work it in. It might take a couple of minutes, but it dries fast. I'm going to finish up doing the rest of the gluing around there now that you've seen how I get it to be clean around the edges. And we'll be back with the next part of this video. Go. Hey, okay, now we're back. Now we're cooking. Finished product. What I did after I took the elastic off, removed the elastic, I just slowly and carefully cleaned off the excess material from the ring all the way around. Got a little tape. I just I just figured I'll keep it simple and just put a little bit of electric tape on it. And pretty much that's all I did. You, you can't fold it over because it when it gets warm, it kind of makes a mess on the mic. It could stick to it. Anyways, so as you can see, it came out nice. It's tight. This won't stretch because of the flexibility in the polyester. Uh, polyester, nylon. I would say nylon, rather. Flexible nylon. And with a thin piece of foam, soundproofing type foam, I didn't bother tacking it in. There's no need for it. You just place it in there. You take your pod mic. It slides right over and it's snug. You can see where it lines up all the way around. So you want it to be uniform. I mean, that's just the OCD in me. And there you have it, folks. A homemade I'd say pretty darn good looking pop filter. I mean, it still needs, I, I still got to clean it up a little bit, you know. I've got to, probably I should leave the glue dry, I would think, around 24 hours. And, and when you're using this glue on plastics and materials, remember one thing, that this glue has a reaction 
with some materials and if you use a good blob of it like say on a cotton or something something that's easily flammable it can get hard enough i've actually seen things not that i've done it <laughs> um almost catch on fire i did li literally start smoking but what, as soon as it dries up it, it, it's fine and before it's completely hard, what's nice about it is it's, it, it becomes easier to work with. You, it, before it gets totally hard, it, it has a little bit of flexibility to it. And you can use your tool or whatever just to put a nice, even crimp all the way around it. So I, I think it came out pretty good. I think it came out pretty clean. If anybody wants one, drop me a line. I'll, I'll put one together. I, I'm, I'm naturally a hyperactive guy, and uh, I like to stay busy a lot. And if, with it being winter and everything else, you know, sometimes I get a little bored like I am right now. And like I said, these little films is uninteresting as they may be for somebody. They may be very interesting to someone else but it still gives um it still gives me a chance to keep my algorithm going because if you don't run your videos for a couple of weeks your algorithm starts to uh fade away and we don't want that to happen okay so um yeah so anyways i hope you enjoyed the video if you did and at least you found it interesting if you're a subscriber give me a thumbs up if you're new to my channel do me a favor and subscribe. Costs nothing, and it really helps the channel out a lot. I don't get paid for a lot of these videos. I am sponsored by a couple companies, but at this time, I'm not really doing any sponsorships until they call me or email me and ask me to do something for them. So on that note, we're gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna put my mic back on. Like I said, you, you can see the difference between a USB and an XLR. And, oh, by the way, some of these companies are coming out with USB and XLR on the same mic. So you can actually mess around with it and see what you like better. The condenser side, the compression on a USB mic gives that mic a unique sound versus the XLR where you can con use the condenser and the noise gate and the VST filters and whatnot to pull your own sound. Actually, the, the Wave 3, now the Wave Link program with the Wave 3 mic, the USB microphone is able to download VSTs or filters, everything from changing your voice and making crazy sounds to noise gate filters, noise suppression, where you can set your level. So like right now, I'm, I'm using this, this um, lab mic. Right now I'm sure you can hear a little fan going in the background on my computer running. With the bigger mic, with this, I can set up the thresholds on it so you can, I can listen to my video, the sound in my video, and raise or lower the threshold so it stops picking up sound at a certain level until I talk directly into it. Again, with this type of mic, you have to speak directly into the microphone. It's not, this is omnidirectional, a unit, unit, you, Uni, uni, unidirectional, something like that. I, drawing a blank right now. Anyways, this was about pop filters. Some mics, you can speak into the side. Some mics pick up all the way around. Like the Yeti it has all different settings, way too many. Settings you probably never use. This one, you speak directly into it. That's why you don't need a pop filter or anything to go all the way around it. There's really no need for it when you're talking right into the mic. Okay, we've been around long enough. I've got to edit this up. Get it ready. Get it out. I really appreciate everybody's help. 
that subscribes and, uh, and the people that come to the channel. I, 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 like I said, I really hope I'm helpful. And, you know, keep coming back. On that note, I'm cutting out. Time to go.